Happy Sunday, church. It's so good to be with you here today again. My name is Kelen Mogarikazi, bringing you today the service. Thank you so much for believing in us and taking part in our online experience. We love so much being with you and hearing from you. Please let us know anything you want to say about our services. Please feel free to comment and let us hear from you. We are still in the middle of the series, Hearing the Voice of God. Now, if you missed last sermon, please feel free to check it out. It's still uploaded for you. Last week, with our very own Pastor Charles Mujisha, he introduced to us the series as he was teaching us about how to hear the voice of God and grow spiritually. So this week, he'll be talking about how to prepare to hear the voice of God. I hope you're so excited like I am to hear this sermon. As usual, we're gonna first worship God together and join in in our sermon. So before we do that, can we pray together? Dear Jesus, thank you so much for today. Thank you so much for bringing us to church. Thank you so much for your love and mercy. Thank you so much for your protection over the week, God. We've seen your mighty hand, you've seen your protection. Thank you so very much. So God, today as we come to church, we come with all that we are and God, we wanna hear from you. We wanna hear you speak to our hearts, speak to our deepest parts of our hearts, God. Please let us hear from you. We love you, we bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. Welcome to church. Standing here surrounded By shame and fear I've drifted I walked away, I squandered the gift of God for granted There's a mold consuming The flesh and bones on me inside The guilt I see in the carry That dries my soul and spirit I don't wanna stay where I am I will run to my God in the arms of love Arms of grace for even more I don't wanna stay where I am I will run to my God in the arms of love Arms of grace for even more I'm coming back to my Father Believing in the Son To think that God loves me no matter what kind of love defines me, He loves me through my darkest. I don't want to stay where I am, I will run to my God in the arms of love, arms of grace for even more. I don't want to stay. Where I am, I will run to my God in the arms of love, arms of grace for even more. I'm coming back to my Father, believing in the Son. I embrace the Spirit, no other place I would rather be. I've come to myself. I am coming home. 
see my love? Do you see my heart? Deeply engraved in my palm, you are. Do you hear a sound? Do you feel a song? Over and over I sing to you
rush of the wind like a melody You're singing your promise to me I can see the waters you've parted beside me Hello friends, it's good to be back with you to bring God's word to you, to encourage you, to build you up. My hope is that last week you learned something about hearing God's voice. I am teaching on how to hear God's voice and grow spiritually. And today I'm going to be touching part two. And part two will be how to prepare yourself to hear God's voice how to prepare yourself to hear God's voice. You know, it's very important for all of us to be hearing God's voice and to be walking in the voice of God. It's very important because if you cannot learn to hear God's voice, I don't know how you will be able to grow spiritually. Hearing God's voice is foundational to our spiritual growth. So welcome to this um, a series in the area of hearing God's voice and growing spiritually. And today, before I start to preach on how to prepare yourself to hear God's voice, I want to pray. God, this morning I come before you, uh, this afternoon for some people, evening for some of others who are in different parts of the world, Father, I ask you in the name of Jesus to speak to us from your word. Lord, as I speak to your children and teach them, I'm asking that your Holy Spirit will descend upon my life and give me what it takes to speak into their lives. I know some people out there have questions and I ask you, Lord, to help me answer those questions through this teaching today. And that their lives will be guided, but they will also be trained to hear your voice. I surrender to you right now. And I request, Lord, that you help me hear you as I speak to your children. Amen. Amen. Okay. How do you prepare yourself to hear God's voice? This is a, 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 another area we need to understand. Because hearing God's voice... It requires the intentionality. You have to be intentional. You shouldn't think that you'll be walking around the road somewhere and hear God speak to you. Or you'll go to sleep and hear God speak to you. Or you'll be eating your food and hear God speak to you. Those things happen. There are some impromptu visitations of God in our lives when God speaks to us without any preparation. But most of the times we hear God's voice when we are seeking out to hear his voice. Friends, let me tell you, what you seek, you get. And if you are seeking to hear God's voice, you are going to start hearing God speak to you. But before you actually start hearing God speak to you, there are some important businesses of the kingdom you have to take care of. There are some things that have to be right in your life. There are priorities that precede hearing God's voice. I want to start by reading from the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 13. Uh, verse 5. And listen to what he, Paul says. Examine yourselves to see whether you are in the faith. Test yourselves or you do not realize this about yourselves. That Jesus Christ is in you. Unless indeed you fail to meet the test. This verse says examine yourselves. Examine yourselves. To see whether you are in the faith. Before you talk about hearing God's voice. Examine yourself. Examine yourself. Test yourselves. Okay. Do, 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 do you not realize that Jesus Christ is in you? 
unless, of course, you fail the test. So you want to test drive yourself. You want to check yourself. You want to listen to your walk with the Lord before you listen to the voice of God speaking to you. I love to drive. And I also have a gift of listening to cars. When I sit in a car, I listen to the car. By driving a few feet from my start, I'm going to test the brakes of the car. I'm going to know whether the lights are working. I'm going to feel the car, whether the engine is shaking. I quickly feel the car. In fact, many, many times, I want to drive my wife's car to be able to feel her car. Sometimes I drive cars of other people we work with so that I can feel the ministry cars, whether the cars actually can pass the test. And it's, it's a natural intuition. It's something that comes to me easily to feel cars, whether this car is actually in a good situation, a good mechanical situation. Our spiritual lives are like that. We need to have the grace and the ability and allow the Spirit of God to work in our lives first and foremost to feel our spiritual lives, to test our spiritual lives, to test our relationship with the Lord, to, 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 to test whether we are actually focusing on the right things in the Lord. I call it spiritual alignment. Is your life spiritually aligned with the will of God for you, with the purposes of God for you, with the plan of God for you. What am I talking about? I'm talking about things like listening to seen announcements in your life. Seen makes announcements in your life. That man, I'm here. And you need to listen to those temptations in your life and overcome them. I call it being sin conscious. It's something that's not going on right in your life. And therefore, you make a choice to put on righteousness and live biblically. And as you live biblically, you actually prepare yourself to be a man or a woman who hears God's voice and walks in the will of God. Examine whether you are still serving him. He used to serve him. Maybe in a choir, maybe as an usher, maybe as a preacher, maybe as a pastor, maybe as a giver, you know, indifferent, maybe as a Sunday school teacher. You want to examine yourself. Are you still passionate about serving the Lord? Is your life aligned with the purposes of God for your life? Are you sharing your faith? Are you talking to other people about Jesus? Are you spiritually in tune with the Holy Spirit? Are you hearing him? Are you sensing him in your prayers? Are your prayers being driven by the Spirit of God? Are you walking in obedience? You know, these are primarily things for us to prepare ourselves to hear the voice of God. Are you in the Word? Are you reading your Bible? Are you deeply seeking to listen to God's Word? In God's voice in the Word? God has given us the Scriptures. And these scriptures have a word from the Lord every day for us. Are you in the word? You know, some people just want to live a mystical life uh, uh, like witches. <laughs> and they want to hear things without actually living a righteous life and pursuing God. I hear many people who pursue 
prophecy and prophecy, but they're not actually walking with the Lord. They want to transact with God spiritually without putting on the garments of righteousness, without uh, making sure that they are walking in the faith, tuned in the spirit, living a life of obedience. Now, are you having an intimate relationship with the Lord? Are you walking with the Lord closely? And as you do those things, you actually put yourself in a position. You prepare yourself to hear the voice of God. You are a godly person. You are seeking to be a godly person. You are seeking to pursue God and love him. And you are ready to do whatever God calls you to do. Now, it's very important for us to hear the voice of God. Very important because, number one, if we don't hear the voice of God, we don't have God's guidance. So you're just choosing to do what you want to do and it's up to you. The results are up to you. Number two, if we are not listening to the voice of God, then we are listening to wrong voices. We are listening to the voices of the world and the voices of the world don't make our lives better. Number three, when we don't listen to the voice of God, we miss God's best. God has the best for us. There are so many good things that can happen in your life. But let me tell you, when you pursue and hear the voice of God, you end up in God's best, not just what is good, but what is best for you. Number four, when we don't focus on hearing the voice of God, we build on a wrong foundation. We build on a wrong foundation. In the book of Matthew chapter 7 verse 24 and listen to what the Bible says in verse 24. Anyone then who hears these words of mine and does them will be like a wise man who built his house on a rock. Listen. Anyone who hears these words of mine Anyone who receives a word from me, anyone who hears and hankers to my voice, the Bible says he builds on a good foundation. It says these words of mine and does them will be like a wise man who built his house on the rock. The voice of God helps us to build on the right foundation in our lives. There are times when God would say no, that is not the time, that is not the place. I remember um, I wanted to start him. Uh, African New Life Ministries, uh, really very much early. And uh, God kept telling me, no, Charles, it's not the time to start. It's the time to be in preparation. And sometimes I imagine if I had missed on the preparation, I would have actually missed on building on the right foundation. So hearing the voice of God helps you to build on the right foundation. Another important thing is that when we don't hear the voice of God, other people suffer. Some people make other people suffer because they did not hear the voice of God. I want you to imagine a dad, a father, who doesn't hear the voice of God and ends up leading his family in a wrong place in a wrong situation, makes a decision that causes the entire family to suffer because he's not hearing the voice of God. Dads, fathers, family leaders, this is critical for us to hear the voice of God as leaders. In fact, as leaders, we need to be hearing the voice of God so that we will lead right. You need to be leading from your knees. And as you do that, you lead well. So, let me talk about keys to hearing God's voice. And uh, I want to derive these four keys from the book of Habakkuk, chapter 2. 
There are many other places we can learn these keys. But I just want us to focus on Habakkuk today and find these keys to hear the voice of God. You are longing to hear his voice. Are you really serious? You want to hear God. You want to hear God speak it to you. God guide your life. God helping you through your prayers to put you in a right position in your life. Yesterday I was praying, spent my day praying and talking to God. And I remember I was talking to God about something. In, in, in really one way I was regretting how I came to make that decision and somehow God gave me a different perspective about my situation. It made me feel much, much better. It made me feel that I am on the right track. God validated my direction. It takes time to hear the voice of God. It takes preparation to hear the voice of God. Listen to Habakkuk, prophet Habakkuk. He wanted to hear the voice of God. And in the book of Habakkuk, chapter 2, verse 1 to 3, listen to what Habakkuk did. Verse 1 says, I'll stand at my watch and station myself on the rampants. Okay? I will look to see what he will say to me. And whatever answer I'm to give to this complaint. It's like me yesterday. The Lord is answer. Then he replied, write down the revelation and make it plain on tables so that the herod may run with it for the revelation awaits an appointed time he speaks of the end and will not prove false though it linger sometimes what you've heard from god may linger you wait for it it will suddenly come it will not delay wow let us bisect this text and he, he get him, uh, learn a way that Habakkuk had he, he, from the Lord and how he prepared himself to hear the voice of God. Number one, in verse one, the Bible says, I will stand at my watch and station myself on the rampants. I will stand at my Watch. Number one, uh, there's a sense of Habakkuk going to a quiet place. Habakkuk, number one, stations himself in a quiet place. In a quiet place. That is very important, especially today. Our world is loud and busy. Even if I locked you in a hotel for seven days, quarantining you from COVID, even in the hotel, you have noise because you have a phone, you have internet, you have a television. There's <laughs> so much noise around us. And I really believe that's why we are not hearing the voice of God enough like the people of the old because there are so many other voices around us voices of the world around us everyone has an opinion about something these days instead of asking god we ask siri tell me and siri has an opinion we ask him we we we, we ask google to tell us and google has an opinion but listen, the Bible says Habakkuk stood at a watch, stationed himself at, 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 at a, in a certain place. He quieted his mind from all other voices. Friends, God is not competing for our ears. 
God is not competing for our ears. God is asking us to give him our ears. I'm not talking about our physical ears. I'm talking about our inner ears. You want to hear the voice of God? You need to learn to quiet yourself. Quiet yourself in the morning. Quiet yourself in the afternoon. Quiet yourself in the evening before you go to sleep. Or take off for a day or two and get away from the city. Or get away from where you have a lot of noise and spend some time with the Lord. Isolate your Self, find a season and a time of meditation alone. Great people, great leaders will always find a time alone. People who invent great things are never in the crowd. They always find a time to be alone and energize their inner person so that their inner person may have stronger ears to hear mysteries and secrets and wisdom and interpret them. This is very important. Every time I have made a significant move in my life, I've had to go to a place, retreat, spend some time reading, praying, hearing from God. And I come out of that place with an incredible level of counsel that I would, that I would not have got from any other person. Number two, he did this. He say keeps watch, okay? He goes into a quiet place and he keeps watch. He keeps watch to see. I don't think he is actually watching with his physical eyes. I think he's watching with his internal eyes to see a vision from the Lord. Is, is, is hearing from God. I'll give you my personal experience. Sometimes for me, I may not hear a voice, but many times I see things in my eyes. When I silence my spirit and my life, I can see Things, even when I'm not, without closed eyes, I can see things God is doing so that I can walk in them. I can see buildings God is building. I can see journeys the Lord is taking with me. I can see new directions in ministry. It's so much more internal in me. Keeping watch, waiting to see if the Lord has something new in my life. If God has something new. Most of the times, God is going to speak to our internal ears. And God is going to show us in our internal eyes of vision of spiritual perception, and you can see what God is doing. Number three, he keeps watching to see, and that's also another important thing, in that he recognizes God's voice as spontaneous thoughts. He recognizes God's voice as spontaneous thoughts. Sometimes as we silence our lives, God gives us spontaneous thoughts. And in those spontaneous thoughts, God is speaking to us. Number four, in the scriptures, the Bible said, inscribe the vision means write it down. So, if you are following me, let me give you four keys to hearing God's voice. Number one, stillness. Stillness. Be still. Be still and fix your eyes on Jesus. Number two, 
vision shift to see what God is saying to you. When you read the language of David is full of images okay when you read the book of daniel god speaks to daniel through different images and animals and metals you need to shift him into images and vision and allow your inner life to see spontaneity that god is spontaneous okay he's gonna speak to you through spontaneous thoughts. And number four, journaling. Okay, let me repeat them. Stillness, vision, spontaneity, and journaling. In other words, you write it down. And sometimes as you start to write it down, God speaks more. It's like the voice of God and your hand begin to flow together. Many things I have done and that things that have happened in my life, you can find them in many ways in my computer, on papers where I've written them. And as I write, God speaks. Friends, God speaks. God wants to speak to you. God wants you to grow as you listen to his voice because learning to listen to God's voice will help you grow as a Christian but also help you end up in a better position in your life. Okay? How does God speak? I'm going to go a little bit deeper to give you different clues of how you can be tracking the voice of God in your situations, in your circumstances, in your pain, in, 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 in things that happen in your life, in your dreams. You know, we want to learn how God speaks. But as I finish, let me give you the three thoughts to take home with you. An assignment for you to keep thinking about till we meet next time to learn more on how God speaks. Three important things. Number one, God is consistent with his written voice. This is the written voice of God. God does not contradict his written voice. Not everything we hear from God is actually written in scripture. Because if God today tells you to move from this city to another city, it's not written right here in scripture, but it does not contradict the scripture. We've seen many people hear from the spirit of God in the Bible and God tells them to make a move or not make a move. Whatever God says, it is consistent with his written voice. Number two, God speaks Quietly and softly. I told you, God is not competing for our ears with the world. God is looking for few of us who are willing to give him our ears. It allow his voice to be the primary guide in our lives. Number three, God, when he speaks, he gets your attention by making you restless. He gets your attention by making you restless. I know that God is speaking to me when I become restless about something. And I know God is moving me towards the a direction. Sometimes it's a dream that makes me restless. Sometimes it's a scripture I've read in the Bible and it actually makes me restless. I want to do something about it. Sometimes it's a thought that makes me restless. And I know God is speaking in my life. May God continue to bless you. May God continue to be with you. I want to meet you next time. I want to speak and bring God's word to you and encourage you and lead you into hearing God's voice. Let's pray. God, once again, we want to thank you 
for the clues you've given us in relation to hear your voice. Father, I pray that someone out there today will be encouraged by this message and that they will learn to hear your voice. They will see you through these voices and be able to find direction, find peace, find truth, build on the right foundation and serve you with purpose. Once again, I thank you for my listeners and I bless them in the name of God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Wow, this has been such a wonderful message. I hope you were blessed like I was. If you missed any of our videos or sermons, please feel free to check them out on our YouTube channel. They are always uploaded for you. If you want to give your tithe and your offerings this week, please check the options given to you at the end of this video. We love so much hearing from you and being with you in this online experience. Thank you so much. See you next Sunday.